Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So I had mentioned a, a couple of weeks ago how August has become my month to plan all things related to fall landscape photography, whether it's upcoming fall workshops or upcoming fall related YouTube videos or just my own personal photo trips just to, to get out there and capture the, the beauty that is this incredible time of year. And I wanted to make sure I get out a video this year pertaining to post-processing color in fall landscape photos. Because when I, when I think of color, I think of fall. I mean, that's, at least for me, that seems to be the time of the year that I'm able to capture the most colorful landscape and outdoor photographs. Plus, color is one of my favorite aspects of post-processing. You can completely change the overall look and the overall feeling and mood of a photograph just by enhancing the color that is already contained within that raw file. And in this video, I wanted to do a comparison. So when I first started uh, down this road of photography, I leaned heavily on the saturation slider and the vibrant slider inside of Lightroom, inside the basic panel. And I didn't know any better at the time, and I felt that it was I was doing the right things. But over time, your I guess your skill set advances a little bit. And I started to realize that there's a, a, a whole world of ways to manipulate color, not just in Lightroom, but in Capture One, inside of Photoshop, really inside of any post-processing software that you're using. And in this video, I wanted to do a comparison. I'm going to edit one of my favorite fall landscape photos, just the color of it, and I'm going to utilize everything inside of Lightroom except the vibrance and the saturation slider inside the basic panel. So things like the picture profile, the camera calibration, the, the color grading, the HSL, the white balance, things like that. Then I'm going to edit that same photo again, that same raw file, but only using the vibrance and saturation slider. And then I'm going to compare those two end results. And I've already gone through this exercise and I can be honest, or I'll be honest with you that I was completely shocked by how different the overall images would be. I, of course, I knew that they were going to be different, but it really made me realize how, uh, not unpowerful, but how vibrance and saturation slider, it's not nearly as powerful as you may think it is. And the, the results really do speak for themselves. So to jump right into it, I don't want this video to drag on forever, but this is the photo. This is one of my favorite fall landscape photos that I, I've ever captured. This is from, I think, two years ago. And this is the, the, the final edited version. And here is the raw file. So once again, this is the, the final edit, and this is the raw file. And you can see that the, the overall, the, the coloring is completely different. This image it looks like you're a peak fall color, and this right here looks like uh, you, maybe you missed the peak by a few days, which in this scenario I actually did. So to jump right into it, one of the very first things that I like to do is change this profile right here from Adobe Color and change it to Adobe Landscape. And watch what happens to the overall colors. It just makes them a little bit more richer, and I'll kind of toggle this back and forth. This is where I started with Adobe Color. And this is with Adobe Landscape. So not a dramatic change, but it's definitely a good starting point. Then I always like to go down and manipulate the white balance. And generally speaking, cloudy and a sunny white balance usually is the warmer white balance. And I think that is kind of synonymous with a, a great land or a great fall landscape photo. So if I change this from as shot, let's go down to cloudy. Cloudy is definitely going to be the warmest of the two, which I think is way too warm for this one. Daylight, even daylight is a little bit too warm. I think I'm just going to take this down to maybe around 5,000. I always like whole numbers, so maybe 5,000. I think that looks good. I think that's a pretty good starting point right there. So then I'm going to jump down to, you know, once again, I'm going to completely disregard the vibrance right here and the saturation slider. I do want to do a little bit of work right here. I'm going to soften down the image a little bit, negative 20 on the clarity because there is so much detail in the branches and the leaves up through here. And I don't want the overall image to, to be too too sharp or too detailed. So I wanna kinda of soften it down just a little bit by using negative 20 on the clarity. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of positive texture. And I think I'm gonna use a little bit of negative dehaze because that's gonna add a little bit of that kind of softening effect, kinda of add almost like a little bit of a, a foggy mood to the overall photo. If I kinda of bring it down more, you can really see the difference there. But I just want to add just a little bit of dehaze right there, and I think that that looks pretty good. And if we toggle the overall edit on and off, this is where we started, and this is where we're at right now. So the next thing I always like to do is jump down to the calibration section, which is insanely powerful. You can definitely go overboard here, but you can really change just the overall richness and the, the quality of the colors in your photograph in this section. 
So I'm going to come down to the calibration section right here. And then I'm going to start right here at the red primary. Much like all the sliders I like to swing them to the left and to the right to see what they're doing. I definitely don't want to shift the, the, uh, the hue to the right because that just looks too, too orange. I think somewhere right around maybe about negative 20 looks pretty good. I think that looks good. I think the saturation, I definitely don't want to go down on the saturation. So I want to add a little bit of saturation to this. And then the green primary, swing it to the left, swing it to the right. I really like the, the, the separation you get going this way versus this way. Because ultimately, I'm trying to create separation between all the colors in the backdrop. That's where all the autumn colors are in this photo. So I'm trying to separate the greens from the reds and the oranges and the yellows. I want all four of those colors to really stand out. I don't want them to all blend together. And when I take this green primary channel and I shift it to the left, you can kind of see how they all start to blend together. But when I sl slide it to the right, you can see that there's a little bit more separation between the four main colors there. So I think I'm just going to take this to positive 20 as well, or positive 21. And then we'll do the same with the saturation. Just kind of bump that up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Because like I mentioned, you can easily go overboard in this section. And then the blue primary. Swing it to the left, swing it to the right. I'm thinking maybe just a little bit to the left, maybe about right there, minus 15. And then the saturation, maybe plus 30. And I'll toggle this entire section on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. So a very subtle change. You definitely want to be easy in this section. You don't want to go overboard because you can really make your photo look uh, cartoonish very, very quickly. So definitely subtlety is the key here. Next, I want to come up here to the, the color grading section, and I want to tone certain areas of the photograph. So you want to be a little bit careful here, because whenever you tone the highlights, so if I come up here and I select highlights, and I'm gonna, I like to tone the highlights a little bit of a warmer color, because I feel like that adds to the overall mood of an autumn photograph. And I'll talk about this on and off. So this is before and after, before, and after, once again, very subtle change, but whenever you tone the highlights and you have moving water, that moving water has got a lot of highlights in there. So you really want to be aware of the water in your photograph because you want to make sure that you're not toning the water that specific color as well. I'll show you what I mean. If I take the saturation here and I take it all the way up, watch the water right here. I want to toggle this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. You can see that that water also took on that same tone. So you really want to be careful there. And you could actually tone the mid-tones, that warmer color as well. I think that might be overdoing it a little bit though. So I think I'm just going to leave the mid-tones alone and only leave the highlights tone that little warmer color right there. And then the next thing I want to do is jump into the HSL section. And this is where a lot of the magic actually happens. And I like to start at the very top with the hue section. So I'm going to come up here to hue, swing this back and forth. And I think I'm going to leave the hue more towards the left, so shift the uh, the reds more towards red as opposed to orange. I'm gonna take the orange maybe to about right there, and then the yellows. I think we're gonna take the yellows up a fair amount because once again, see all the colors start to kind of blend together there, and I am really wanted to keep separation between all of these colors. I think that looks good, and then green. Uh, I think you can separate the colors much better when you go to the right in this particular scenario. So maybe around plus 20. And then for the saturation, I just want to boost these each individual channels up just a touch. Orange, I think maybe there. And I'm doing this really quick. Uh, yellow plus probably 20 again or 20. That looks good. And then green. I'm actually going to take the greens down just uh, actually quite a bit because I don't want the greens to stand out too much. I don't want them to become a distraction. I really don't want to draw a ton of attention to the greens because green isn't synonymous with uh, false. So I just want to kind of I want to make sure that you see them there, but I don't want them to be the real star of the show. So I want to kind of desaturate those a touch. And then luminance. This is my favorite section right here. You can really change just the brightness values of certain colors. So I'm going to Bring the reds up just uh, ever so slightly. Gonna take the oranges, do the same thing here with the oranges. You can see what that's doing. Very, very powerful. So right there. 
And then the yellows, mm, plus 15, eh, right around there, probably looks good. And then the greens, I'm gonna bring the greens up just a touch, actually quite a bit, to about right there. And then we'll toggle this section on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. Well, you can really hear my computer taking off. The Whenever I start to do all of these types, I don't know what it is with the HSL section, it just really kicks my fans, uh, uh, the motor on my fans on my computer on. It makes it sound like my computer is about to take off. But once again, this is before and after. And let me toggle the entire edit on and off now. So this is the raw file, and this is where we're at right now. Once again, raw file, and right now, and as you'll see here, we didn't do anything with the vibrance and saturation sliders right here. They're both still set at zero. So now I'm gonna edit the same raw file again, but I'm only gonna use vibrance and saturation. So this will only take a second. Once again, we are right here. All the same edits up through here. Let me, uh, just to keep everything perfectly aligned, let me take the clarity down, bring the texture up just a touch, bring the dehaze down a little bit. And now let's only focus on the vibrance and the saturation. So if I take the vibrance and crank it all the way to 100, you can see what that does. If we take the saturation all the way up, you can see what that does. And if you're not really familiar with the difference, saturation is basically going to increase the saturation of every color in your photograph the same way. Vibrance is a little bit more, is a little smarter of a tool. It's basically going to increase the vibrancy of the more muted colors in your photograph. So it's going to affect the colors that are a little bit more dull than the colors that are a little bit more saturated. And when I crank this all the way up, you can kind of see the difference. This is saturation at plus 100, and then this is vibrancy at plus 100. So more realistically though, let's just kind of bring the saturation up a touch. Yeah, maybe about right there. This is how I used to do it all the time. And then I'd bring the vibrancy up quite a bit to maybe about right there. Anything beyond that starting to look a little bit weird, I think. So maybe around plus 50 and then plus 10. And that's really pushing it because I'm really trying to get these fall colors to really pop in this overall photograph. But where what's really crazy is when you compare these two images together. So let me go back up here to the library. Let's click library here, click both of these, jump into survey mode. And this right here, obviously this is the image that we use the, all the other tools. So basically the HSL panel, the calibration, white balance, profile, color grading, and we did not touch at all the hue, or I'm sorry, the vibrance and the saturation slider in the basic panel. And this is the exact opposite. This is only using the vibrant slider and the saturation slider. So what a complete difference. And when I saw these two compared, you know, I'm a, I'm a visual learner, I'm a comparative learner, and this is direct, this is definitely in my wheelhouse that really makes me to understand how powerful certain techniques are over certain other techniques. And this was a real eye opener to me. So if you are getting started or you're looking to take your, your post-processing to an entirely new level from a coloring perspective, I would highly, highly recommend not leaning so much on the vibrance and saturation slider is, is I should say the global vibrance and sl saturation slider, easy for me to say, and start to lean on more specific ways to edit the color in your overall photographs. And I think you can, you would agree that the image on the left is substantially better than the image on the right. Sure, the one on the left takes a little bit more work, but it didn't take a, uh, an exorbitant amount of additional time and the results I think really do speak for themselves. And I think that that was a, a very interesting comparison. It definitely taught me a lot as well. So I do hope that you were able to pick up some helpful information out of that. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I do want to say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of this channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog post and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. Hope you're able to, to walk away with at least one piece of information that you could apply to your fall landscape photography, really any season of photography moving forward. 
As always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below, and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.